Hey everybody, James Holloway here from the Gonzo History Gaming Blog. Today is day uh, 19 of RPG A Day 2015, and we are going to talk about Supers role-playing games. Um, I like my Supers role-playing games comic booky, uh, but I don't have like a strong preference. Um, and in fact, kind of a lot of the big names in the field I have not played. So obviously the big name superhero role-playing game is Champions. I did once make a Champions character, but the game never got off the ground. So I don't feel like I can speak with any real authority about a lot of these systems. I also haven't played Mutants and Masterminds, you know. When I was a kid, uh, I played uh, Heroes Unlimited, the Palladium superhero role-playing game, because I played everything Palladium when I was a kid. I had Ninjas and Super Spies, Siege Mutant Ninja Turtles, Rifts. I didn't play Palladium Fantasy. I even had Robotech, even though I neither ever played it nor care about Robotech. So, maybe I... Eh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, Heroes Unlimited, I think, is one of those cases where the Palladium system, that clunky... Yeah, I hate that term, clunky. I don't even know what it means. That, um, it's very complicated. Um, the core mechanic is simple, but then it has a lot of additional detail grafted onto it. And character creation and advancement in particular is very bookkeepy and time-consuming. Um, you know, you tend to have a lot of individual powers and, and bonuses and things to remember. Um, and when you start creating characters who have, in addition to all that stuff actual superpowers, it starts to get very confusing. Um, so, uh, Heroes Unlimited, I felt, you know, they felt like they had to have a supers game. Um, it has a following. I mean, there's certainly people who like it. Um, whatever. Um, but the main game that I played when I was in school, and actually I think this is that copy. Um, it's not originally mine. Um, I think it originally belonged to a friend of mine who gave it to me when he moved, or maybe he just left it at my house, you know, and then fell out of playing role-playing games. I don't know. But anyway, it is Marvel Super Heroes. Um, and there's both this, which is the sort of second version, which is slightly more kind of uh, advanced, and then you got your um, you got your earlier uh, version that's a bit more whatever. Um, anyhow, Marvel Super Heroes. It's a good game. Um, it's obviously uh, now out of date in terms of its sort of portrayal of the Marvel Universe, so if you want to update it to, uh, you know, the, the Marvel Universe of the 21st century, you're going to have to get out your copies of the official handbook of the Marvel Universe and uh, and then make it all make sense. Um, it runs largely off of the Universal table on the back, which looks confusing, but actually once you get the hang of it, I think it's pretty simple. Um, and it's full of individual little subsystems in the way that I just criticized. Uh, Heroes Unlimited for being, but somehow a Marvel um, character sheet seems quite manageable to me. Um, even though it's been a while since I played it. I played it again in the 21st century, but that was still a few years ago now. Um, I can't remember the exact number, but uh, I haven't played it in a few years. Uh, but you know, it was fun. We ran around fighting, I don't know, Doctor Doom and Black Bolt and people. Um, and, uh, you know, worrying about our reputations. I had a high old time. Anyway, um, Marvel Super Heroes. I think it's probably my favorite Supers game. As I say, I haven't really played a huge number, so it kind of wins by default. But I do like the way in which its various little uh, components produce characters who have that sort of slightly off Marvel Universe feel about them, right? I mean, what I like about persistent comic settings like the Marvel Universe or the DC Universe is that they have all these weird bits and pieces that don't necessarily fit together 100%. Um, but by putting those elements that don't necessarily work well together next to each other, you can produce interesting tensions. Um, not always, but sometimes. So, you know, like the Batman versus Superman story has been super overdone, but in essence it does it is quite an interesting story about two different ways of being a hero. Um, speaking of Batman, I, the only other Supers RPG that I own, at least in uh, in paper form, I think, is uh, the Batman role-playing game. And I bought this when I was a youngster who bought everything Batman. I loved Batman. Batman was my thing. Um, and this is sometime in the late 80s to early 1990s. Now, Batman stopped being my thing sometime around 1992-ish. Um, the end of the kind of Grant Brayfogel era. Grant? Yeah, I think Grant and Brayfogel. Um, and I just kind of, you know, I fell out of it after that point. So, um, so anyway, this is a, as, as I understand it, this is a slimmed down version of the DC role-playing game, uh, that was published by Mayfair Games. 
uh, Mayfair, as you can see here, and uh, focused on kind of low-powered heroes fight crime in Gotham City. Um, and I never really, like, I don't know, I should, maybe I should reread it. I, I found, personally, the DC system confusing. Um, you know, but maybe if I came back and looked at it today with a broader knowledge of games, I'd, I'd, it would make more sense. But at the time, it seemed to me to be quite a lot of work. Um, yeah. You know, I said before that I didn't feel that licensing was particularly important for RPGs, but I do wonder if that's the case in Supers games, because, you know, there are just these two big names in the world of superheroes, right? I mean, uh, Marvel and DC, and certainly adopting those settings seems like a lot less work than coming up with your own fleshed-out uh, superhero universe. Um, unless you want to have one of those, like, oh, we're the first, you know, there's only a handful of superheroes in the world kind of settings rather than one where they're a commonplace thing. And actually, despite the fact that I seem to think it's very difficult to come up with a super setting, I have done it myself twice. Um, uh, once for a fiction project I worked on, and once when I ran uh, a Supers game using HeroQuest 2nd Edition. Um, which is actually a pretty straightforward thing to do. Um, you know, you have a generic system, and then, you know, it has this kind of... Um, uh, the, the what, what, what was magic in, in HeroQuest? I then said, okay, well, this is your superpowers keyword, so describe what your superpowers do. It's interesting. It does have the result that Hero Quest sometimes does of making a lot of things that should be different mechanically similar to each other. So even though the description of what is happening is different, the procedure that you as, as players are following at the table is the same. And that's, you know, that's a thing that tastes differ on. Um, some people like different things happening in the game world to be represented by different things happening at the table. You know, fighters and wizards don't work in the same way. Uh, you know, my persuading you to do something and my, you know whatever, jumping over a flaming thing on my motorcycle, aren't the same mechanic. Um, you know, I, I can see that argument. Um, certainly, uh, every power in Marvel superheroes works in a goofy different way, but uh, again, I think that's part of its charm. So, overall, I would say that my favorite supers RPG is Marvel superheroes. Um, and not just because it's set in the Marvel Universe, because actually when I was a kid, I was a DC kid. You know, see my earlier comments about Batman. I sure love Batman. I like DC Comics. I'm still a DC guy in my way, but I'm learning to appreciate Marvel a lot more. Um, but the Marvel game, I think, is really pretty good. I think it holds up after all these years. Um, a lot of it is available online. I mean... Um, there have been subsequent Marvel games, but I haven't really looked at them. I'm... People who play them tell me that they like them a lot, so they could be great. Um, but like I said, I don't have a big knowledge of the field, and if someone wants to run a Supers game, you know, whatever system they want to use, I'm happy to play it. I'm not, like, I, I don't have strong opinions about this. So, um, and actually now, this just doing this video makes me want to, like, check out some more Supers games, because I, I learned that I don't know all that much about them. So if you have a favorite superhero system that you'd like to tell me about, um... You know, uh, tell me what you like about it. You know, not just that you like it, but tell me what, you know, what about it appeals to you and, and what kind of playstyle you think um, it's good for. Uh, leave a comment either here on YouTube below this video or over on my blog at Gonzo History Gaming. Um, and join me tomorrow for another genre-related question that I don't know what it is. All right, I'll see you then.